Welcome everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make these nice uh, cables, jumper or Dupont cables. As you can see, they come in two types, the male type and the female type. So basically what you have uh, inside these cables is of course the wire. And then either you have these uh, male type uh, pins or you have these female type pins. And the purpose of them is that you can use these, for example, jumper pins and uh, plug these female uh, connectors on them. And these come very handy when you have some kind of microcontroller or you have some uh, circuit board. As you can see, it has a lot of jumper cables and uh, you can use these cables to, for example, connect the signals to these uh, pins or provide uh, power and so on and so on. But uh, there's a lot of problems with this thing. A lot of times it comes uh, in a bad condition. What I mean by that is that uh, the metal parts inside, so these parts, uh, do not grab uh, the insulator properly and everything falls apart or if you use them a lot then they tend to break around the, the connection here and also they come in a pre-assembled lengths and if you have some custom project where you need let's say half a meter wire of this which is not necessarily practical but why not uh, then you might want to make your own cables so i will try to quickly show you how to make this uh, easily and let's say professionally uh, you will need two kind of tools. Uh, the most important tool is this. It's a ratcheting uh, crimping tool. As you can see, it has two different size of uh, teeth. Uh, one is for smaller and one is for a bit larger uh, connections or parts. So if you have some larger things or different uh, standards, then uh, you can insert here or there, depends on. And then the other is a wire cutter plus wire stripper. And uh, both of these tools, let's say equally uh, important, and I will show it to you why, and I will also explain it. But uh, what we have to do here is that we need some piece of cable that we want to use. And uh, in order to understand why we have to be careful when we strip this cable, I will show you some close-up shots and uh, try to show you what happens uh, when you crimp uh, this cable. For that, I will need some uh, other setup because I will use another camera to uh, record uh, the macro uh, part. So what we do in practice is that, uh, for example, uh, we have these jumper pins on the circuit board and then we insert uh, the female part on these pins like this. So then uh, this uh, pin goes all the way in into this uh, female socket and then there are two more parts which uh, stay exposed or stay free and those two parts uh, will grab the cable itself, this guy here. So we will have to see how this works in practice. So I just removed this metal part and then we change uh, the view to the other camera and then we see what happens. So I insert uh, this uh, jumper pin. This is like the regular length. And then we will look at uh, this jumper pin soon. So I assembled everything and now you can see the macro uh, video of this. So here you see the end of the, of the jumper pin which uh, penetrates this female uh, socket. And then here, this uh, rectangular part uh, is the part which will grab the cable, the conductor. And then this, uh, or these two uh, triangular parts will grab the insulator. So we have to be very careful about the length of this part because we cannot have too long uh, exposed wire because if it's too long and we push uh, the cable too much in, then uh, the jumper pin will not uh, come in 
all the way as it should and then the connection will be very loose and very poor and uh, that might lead to very bad things. So this length actually is around two millimeters. So when we strip back our cable, we have to make sure that it's not really longer than two, maybe 2.5 millimeters. And it's also a good idea that when you are crimping the, when you are crimping this part, you keep the jumper pin inside. So you can see and you will notice if your uh, cable stripped back too long, you can still cut it back and shorten the exposed uh, conductor then. So what we will do now, I will show you how to cut this cable and how to uh, make the crimping. So this is not really a rocket science. All you have to do is you have to eyeball this uh, two millimeter roughly. Uh, either you get a feeling of it uh, after a while or you really measure it and uh, use a marker or something to draw a line. But uh, we just go by the eyeballs. So roughly something like this. Uh, this should be like 2 or maybe 2.5 uh, millimeters. And then uh, we try to insert it in the female pin and uh, see how we can proceed. So as I said, we have two uh, teeth here and we have to do it in the uh, following way. So we have this valley and we have this pin or tooth. So the bottom of this metal part uh, will sit on this uh, tip here. And uh, the end of this metal part has to be like parallel or in the same plane at the end of the, as the end of this uh, tooth. And then we start uh, to align it and then just uh, very slowly close the grips. So you can hear clicks. So one click already uh, happened. So we push in, let's say two clicks, because now uh, this is a solid uh, connection. So it's tight enough to uh, grab the uh, pin or socket uh, properly. And now we take our cable and then just pull it all the way in. You will feel when there is a physical resistance and that's when the end of this wire touches the, the other end, which is inside the socket, uh, touches the end of the of this jumper pin. So we just go all the way in and then we close it. So this is done. And now I don't remove the jumper pin. I just put this back in our stand and uh, try to rotate it in a way that we will see it in the macro shot and we will investigate this with the other camera. So now we see the thing and we can see that this was not the best uh, connection or not the best crimping. So as you can see the end of the wire is sticking out but it's not a big deal because we can still let uh, the jumper pin enter this socket entirely. But you can see that the cable was grabbed properly here. So it grabs the cable very nicely. And also the insulator has a very solid connection here. So in fact, if we are somewhat uh, skillful, then we can just try to cut out that cable with a very uh, sharp side cutter. But we can check if this is fine by wasting this. So we have the larger opening here. And we can try to pu push it in, but it doesn't go in. So we discard this because it's not a good connection. So this suggests that uh, we have to cut uh, the cable even shorter. So I think it's a good thing that we failed for the first time. So we can show it properly how to do it uh, in a good way. So this was too long. So I cut it back and now we have a shorter uh, connection. So I just grab another uh, female part and uh, insert it on the jumper pin. So this goes all the way in. So now I grab the crimping tool and put the bottom on the pin. Two clicks, maybe three. Three is better. And uh, before that, I just cut this cable so everything is more comfortable. 
and then uh, we just simply insert this cable. Also, uh, you can check it visually by, by looking at it and you can see where is the end of the cable. And if you are satisfied, you just close the grips. And let's look at it again in the macro uh, lens. So I think this looks really decent. So first of all, you can see that uh, the insulator is captured very nicely with these two triangular uh, pieces. And then here, these two parts were folded in very nicely, so they grab the conductor in a good way. And you can see that the jumper pin is touching the end of the conductor, but the conductor is not bent and it is not damaged. So this is a very good uh, crimping. And we can try to put it in this uh, plastic uh, housing and see if, if it was good. But uh, we can make sure that this is a solid connection. I pull it and it's still in one piece. So this goes in and it's nice. And we can just test. Perfect. So it goes on this uh, jumper pin perfectly. And uh, the same practice uh, is valid or the same exercise is valid for these uh, male parts. Uh, the only thing or the only difference is th just the end of these things, but uh, these uh, structures are the same. So it has a rectangular flat part, which will fold around uh, the conductor and it has a triangular shape uh, part, which we will grab into the insulator part of this uh, cable. And what I have to say is that this cable might be a bit too thick and too rigid because I felt some resistance when I tried to insert uh, the, the metal part into this uh, plastic housing. So it might be a good idea to get a bit uh, thinner wire or something with a softer uh, insulator. So as you can see, this was uh, relatively easy. So you just need these uh, connectors, uh, some cables and uh, the plastic part. And you can make your own cable like this in a much better quality. Uh, the most important thing is this part because you can still use some kind of side cutters and if it's uh, sharp enough, uh, so for example, this kind of uh, plier, which is yeah, a side cutter, you can uh, cut back the insulator in a very uh, nice way. You just uh, grab the insulator with this in a very uh, delicate way. You can feel and see it when it cuts through the insulator. So you just uh, grab it a little bit turn it by 90 degrees, grab it a little bit, and then you do this uh, a few times. So you will uh, cut cut around uh, the conductor. And then, yeah, if the cable allows, you can easily pull it off. It requi requires some practice, but uh, you can see that it can, it can be done. And then uh, you make sure that this is uh, shorter than two millimeters or roughly two millimeters. So you have to still cut it back. So something like this, and then uh, you can use uh, these parts and this uh, crimping tool. It's, it's really worth it because it's just once in a lifetime investment and not extremely expensive. But uh, you don't necessarily need this if you have some sharp uh, side cutters. And these are really cheap as well as these. So yeah, uh, this was not a big exercise. Uh, if the video was confusing, uh, then visit my website, see the address in my description, because I took a series of pictures of the whole process, so you will see step by step how to do this. And uh, you can duplicate it and hopefully you will make even better connections than me. So yeah, this was a bit uh, different video than my usual videos, but uh, since I make a lot of these kind of connections for my different projects, I think uh, why not share this uh, knowledge and this kind of practice. So I hope it was helpful and I hope you learned something and see you in the next video.